AM radio, an op-ed column, and Fox News is not enough. I want a center-right nation to fight for its soul, and its soul is represented in the arts. Its soul is represented in, in a world in which media is everything. AM radio is the lowest form of communication. It's tinny. It's not robust. It's not avatar. I want avatar. I want the right to enter the world of media to the extent and invest in media the way that the left does. The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them because the people know the truth. The fake media tried to stop us from going to the White House, but I'm president and they're not. You're listening to the Kurt Schilling Podcast, a Breitbart.com podcast. The podcast starts now. Here's Kurt with today's headlines. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Kurt Schilling Podcast. Got to go in today. We got Congressman Jim Jordan up first, and then, as always, the entertaining Sonny Johnson batting second. Sean is with me today. Say hello. Hi. How are you? All right. Good sound stuff today too, as well. We're gonna we're gonna start off. Uh, listen to uh, President Trump at a rally, as he often does, and uh, he was out talking to the people. And uh, CNN was there, and our favorite punching bag, Jim Acosta, was there as well. I want you to listen to Acosta talking to Wolf Blitzer. Briefing for reporters today. That means the White House has held only three briefings for the press this month and eight total since the uh, end of May. There is no other way to describe what the White House is doing these days. Wolf, top officials, including the president, are hiding from the press. And, Wolf, just to give you a sense as to what's happening right now, you can hear there is a chorus of boos and other chants from this Trump crowd here in Tampa, Florida. They're saying things like CNN sucks, go home, and fake news. Wolf, obviously, all of those things are false. We're staying right here. We're going to do our job and report on this rally to all of our viewers here tonight. Wolf. As you should. Uh, all right, Jim Acosta, we'll stay in very close touch with you. Okay, first of all, that, that should tell you right there what CNN's about. Those those chants are opinions, and at the end of those opinions that he mentioned, other chants, the other chants were Acosta sucks, in case you didn't catch that. But they can't be fake, they're opinions. CNN sucks, Acosta sucks, even though I would argue that's factually true. And the White House blackout, I don't think many people know this, but the White House is under no obligation to speak to the media, any time ever. They have no legal obligation. They do that as a courtesy, uh, and they could... I mean, this president could stop it tomorrow. We'd still know what's going on through Twitter. So I, I thought that was rather uh, amusing that uh, Jim Acosta called a public chance fake. At that same rally, I want you to listen to uh, the president as he continues to call for the un-American support of ICE and the Border Patrol, which apparently is somehow uh, uh, racist when you talk to liberals. Listen up. Republicans want strong borders and no crime. Democrats want open borders, which equals massive crime. And on top of that, the Democrats, Nancy Pelosi, the whole group, Maxine, Maxine, she likes me a lot. They've launched outrageous attacks on our incredible law enforcement officers and on ICE and our border patrol. Can you believe it? People that keep us safe. Their new platform, what they want to do, the Democrat Party, they want to abolish ICE. In other words, they want to let MS-13 rule our country. That's not going to happen. Every day, the brave men and women of ICE are liberating communities and towns from savage gangs like MS-13 that are occupying our country like another nation would. We want maximum border security and respect for our heroes, ICE, Border Patrol, and law enforcement. And we're going to have tremendous border security that will include the wall. That will include the wall. Now, a lot of people don't know it, but we've already started the wall. We got $1.6 billion, and we've started large portions of the wall but we're going to need, even the way we negotiate, we're going to need more, and we're going to get more, and we may have to do some pretty drastic things, but we're going to get it. 
Because the Democrats, the Democrats are not voting for what we want to do, and they're not voting and allowing our values to take place in our country. We're tracking down the gang members, and we're tracking down the drug dealers and the child predators and the criminal aliens, and we're throwing them in jail or throwing them the hell out of our country. In some states, Democrats are even trying to give illegal immigrants the right to vote. They want to give them the right to vote. And what about all of those people that are waiting in line for seven, eight, nine, ten years, trying to get into our country? They don't have the right to vote. We believe that only American citizens should vote in American elections. Which is why the time has come for voter ID, like everything else. Wow, some pretty novel stuff there, huh? Yeah. I mean, he just continues to, and it's the, more... the fact that he's even saying it is shocking. That right. we should have to have an ID, right. like that's just like a common sense thing. Well, that, and that we're back to what Sonny says: is we let the left drive the conversation. We shouldn't be having the conversation about having you, uh, having voter ID to vote in an election for a country. It's just common sense. It shouldn't even be a conversation. Do you know how much money would be spent from liberals bringing people over to the United well, States? Well, the problem the is that when the... when that initially came to put on the table I, identification, it happened right after uh, we had abolished slavery and, and blacks didn't have, slaves didn't have a way to get ID and it was seen as racist. That was, but that was 1890. Not, not you know, 2018. Well, just our own city is well, trying to make it so everybody yeah, can yeah. vote in the next Which election. Which is the, we're the only country in the world that allows people who don't live here, to, that aren't legally here to vote. Right. Uh, that it makes no sense. Makes no sense to me either. So, uh, yeah, no, there was so much of that that I, I loved his little taunt to Maxine. Uh, always a pleasure to hear that one. But his continued respect for our law enforcement agency drives the left crazy. Oh, and by the way, if you get a chance to watch that video uh, we played the soundbite from first, check out the person standing right behind Jim McCosta in the sand that has the Blacks for Trump sign, uh, which apparently, well, I'm sure that drives the left uh, absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was uh, certainly interesting. Uh, and, and I think that uh, the left is re- – Jim Acosta and CNN are reaping what they've sown. Their uh, uh, consistent reporting and lies and hatred of, of this administration has caused this. So, uh, And another reason why the left uh, has become the uh, – or why they are the target for the right, and they're such a miserable group of people. Former GOP Governor Christine Todd Whitman wrote an L.A. Times op-ed piece, and you can imagine what it was, but it basically the message was President Trump is unfit to remain in office. Why don't you listen to her try and defend that one on CNN? I know that this took a lot for you to write, but I mean, just so people know, you weren't a Trump supporter. You'd come out and said, look, I voted for Hillary Clinton, but now you're coming out with this step down and you're doing it now. What made you decide to do this now? Well, the final straw for me was the way he behaved over in Europe uh, for the EU and NATO meetings when he basically dissed our allies and set them aside and embraced Putin. And when you take the oath of office, you agree and hold up your right hand and swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States Mm. against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Putin is an enemy. He is not going to be our ally. Talking to him is fine. Nothing against that. But to fawn over him the way the president did, to set aside our allies hmm. to throw everything into uncertainty on the people who are for the people who are on our side in order to appear more closely aligned with somebody like Vladimir Putin that's just not good for the country so Republican voters, as you know, strongly back President Trump. Paul Begala was just raising this point, right? He was saying, I believe his 88, uh, our latest polling is 82%. Mm -hmm. No matter how you look at it, it is a stratospheric approval rating among Republicans. That's the key. They're such a small percentage of the registered voters. But if you get all the Republicans to vote for him, he can win again. But if you're only 29%, yes, he can. Oh, I, I don't doubt that he can. But if you're only 20... 29, and now I've heard 26 percent of voters identify as Republicans. So if you're talking, yes, if you get that out, it's a serious block, but that's a small percentage of the overall potential electorate. You're talking about the Trump base. 
the Trump base, mm -hmm. the Republican base, the, those who self-identify as Republicans now are between 26 and 29 percent. 30 percent is Democrats say they're Democrats and 40 is independents or unaffiliated. Hmm. So you've got a huge block and, and those that 40 percent is not going to even break 50. So would 50. you leave the party? Would you leave that 26 to 29? Well, I'm not in that 26 to 29. I'm, I'm an Eisenhower Republican and those are not the ones that they ever poll uh, as identified Republicans. Yeah, I think uh, they're going to fall into the trap they fell into last time, which is to to use the poll numbers to make the story, and we're going to find out that people just aren't. I I, I don't blame them. A lot of people were. Talk, I've never been polled. Have you ever been polled? Mm. And a lot of people that I know that have been polled refuse to admit to being a Republican because of the things we're learning about our government. Yeah. And the and the invasion of privacy that's following that message. And it's only fueled by idiocy like this. Chuck Rosenberg, a former U.S. attorney, and Jeremy Bash, who's a former CIA chief of staff, were talking to Nicole Wallace uh, about. And I want you to listen to how he tries to turn collusion to conspiracy by lying about the definition of conspiracy. That's the for This is the former CIA chief of staff. Listen up. So you have both banned the word collusion from any broadcast uh, on which we all appear together. Talk about how the real um, sort of pot at the end of the rainbow for an investigation is a conspiracy. Chuck, you first. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess collusion just irks me, Nicole, because it's not... <laughs> and you're not easily irked. I don't tend to irk easily. <laughs> um, but this is sort of a made-up thing. Collusion means agreeing with somebody else to do something. That's what a conspiracy is. They're synonyms, right? So the fact that collusion doesn't appear in the criminal code, as Mr. Giuliani asserts, is utter nonsense, because conspiracy does. And what the Mueller team is investigating is whether folks in the United States conspired with the Russians to interfere in our election. Call it what you want. When they finally charge it, it's going to be charged as conspiracy. The notion that collusion isn't a crime is a complete red herring. It's to mislead people. It's for the court of public opinion, but it's not for a court of law. I just want to follow up with you, Chuck. You just said when they finally charge it. Are you seeing enough pieces come to light in just what is public facing in this investigation that you believe there will be enough to charge someone with a conspiracy to uh, coordinate or receive assistance from a hostile foreign power? Yeah, it's an educated guess. Um, I hope it's a well-educated guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hope it's a well-educated guess, Nicole. But yes, I am. Uh, there are bits and pieces in the public record that suggest that um, it wasn't just Russians. The timing of the president's statements in Doral, Florida, uh, urging the Russians to um, go find the missing emails or hack into the DNC computers, all of that is tied to Russian activity that Mr. Mueller recently charged um, when he brought a case against the Russian intelligence officers. So uh, I, I think there is enough. I think there are other calculations that are really important here, like, for instance, whether Mr. Mueller believes he has the authority to charge a sitting president. There's some debate on that point. The Department of Justice has weighed in on it, weighed in, on it in the past and has um, opined that you cannot. So there's some unanswered questions, but I think the pieces are there. Notice how the lack of data behind, I think, the, he didn't actually say anything he can find. He just said he thinks they're there, a well-educated right. guess. Right. Uh, even though we've, after two years, we have nothing. And but that's, and, and you know what? It, even if they did, which they're not going to find anything, and it's not going to be linked to the president, he's going to be president again by then. So do we start this whole process over again, or do we just But did you notice how he said, he, he didn't say we there's enough to charge the president with conspiracy. Right, he said right, there's enough to that. charge someone with someone. conspiracy, which, by the way, there isn't, especially when you're talking about public-facing knowledge. But that's the hope. The hope is that uh, people like that, and, and again, you you listen to people like that and realize that that person actually has a college education, and we're seeing all the same information, and he's coming up with something that is completely random and fake. So, yeah. anyway, uh, we're going to take a short break. On the flip side of this, Congressman Jim Jordan will join us. 
Breitbart News Daily with Alex Marlowe. Jeannie in Pennsylvania. I think he's gotten away from what we really hired him to do, which is draining the swamp. If you look at the real picture of draining a swamp, you go in and you take all the water out of it. What sure. does it leave? It leaves the gunk. He cannot mm. get rid of the gunk. We have to get rid of the gunk. Everything he's doing, he's lowering the water so we can see who needs to go. The only way they can go is if we vote them out. Breitbart News Daily, weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Patriot 125. You're listening to the Kurt Schilling Podcast. Once again, here's Kurt Schilling. Joining me now, as he has in the past, is uh, our pray to God, future Speaker of the House, Congressman Jim Jordan. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, Kurt. Good to be with you. Thoughts off of the Trump rally yesterday. I argue it's more of the same. More, as much as the, the, the mainstream media hates to show the enormous amount of public support this president has, they can't help but do it. I uh, wonder what your thoughts are just kind of fresh off the rally no, it was No, it was great. Uh, Polly and I got to watch it uh, a, a little bit. We probably watched, you know, 20, 30 minutes of it. I thought it was... <clears throat> It was uh, it was great, and the president loves that environment, and the American people love what he's doing. Uh, we said this last week, Kurt. Think about this: in in a year and a half, in a year and a half, regulations reduced, taxes lowered, economy growing at an unprecedented rate, unemployment at its lowest in 20 years. Gorsuch on the court, Kavanaugh on deck. We're out of the crazy Iran deal. The embassy has gone to Jerusalem, and the hostages have come home from North Korea. That is an amazing year and a half by anybody's definition. Now, of course, you wouldn't know it if you just watched, you know, watched the mainstream press. But, but that is what this president has accomplished, and and that's why that's why that crowd there yesterday and so many crowds around the country just like it are are fired up about this president getting things done and doing what he said he would do. It's a continuation of the 2016 story. The the truth is not what the media is showing the rest of the world. There is an enormous groundswell of support in this country. I think it's only grown. I think if we had an election today, he'd win by more electoral votes today than he did in 2016. Because I think there are more Americans in a better place financially, security-wise. Everything you just pointed out is true. And there's more to that than, than – I mean, it's too long to list the number of things that he's done. This it just – Quite simply, I, 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 and I said this during the election, if you, for no other reason, the Supreme Court is the reason you should vote for President Trump. Yeah, uh, and, yeah. And, and that came to fruition with the Gorsuch appointment. Let me ask you real quick about uh, Justice Kavanaugh. I'm, I'm assuming that even though Dems want to stall and do all the crap they're going to do, he's going to find a way through to get appointed because he's so far overqualified it's ridiculous. I mean, anything on that yeah, front for that, us? I think you're right. I think he's a great selection. Uh, I think in the end the Senate does the right thing and they confirm him. Um, and I think he's going to be the next next justice of the United, on the United States Supreme Court, and that's good. Now, now we got now we got a conservative majority on the court. And we'll get uh, we'll get better, 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 uh, better policy as a result of that. So th- you're, you're right. This is one of the key reasons why the American people made Donald Trump president. They they know it's important to have constitutional conservative justices on the Supreme Court. And he's given us two good picks. I got to tell you, one of the things that uh, hearing you say it makes it even more clear to me. You can you can put constitution and conservative you can replace one with the other our our supreme court now leads very heavily towards the constitution as written yep uh, that that's nothing but a good thing because the the amendments to that constitution since it was written have turned us into a country unlike any country on the planet and and i you know hopefully uh ruth bader ginsburg will will retire off into the sunset and before she turns 152 and and We'll have a third appointment from the president. Um, you know, no disrespect intended, but she be great. I find the fact that well, but the fact of the matter is, she made it very clear she opposes the president, and, and right. for, that worries me on so many different levels because the Supreme Court, you know, the uh, uh, Lady Justice is supposed to be blind, and and it's not yep. as far as I'm concerned. No, it's it, it's supposed to be uh, equal treatment under the law. And frankly, uh, it's one of the things that bothers Americans right now when you think about some of the things we've seen from uh, from the federal government. This idea that there's one set of rules for for Kurt Schilling and Jim Jordan and the rest of the folks in this country, but a different set if you're part of the politically connected class. If your name is Clinton, Comey, McCabe, Lerner, Lynch, there's a different set of rules, and it's not supposed to work that way. So if Justice Ginsburg retires and, and the president gets a third uh, uh, person on the court, 
that's great, I think, because if, if, if it continues in the vein of, of Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, that's exactly what I think the country needs. Yeah, and I, 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 her name escapes me right now, but the the, the justice that was possibly uh, uh, online for the appointment this yeah. last time hopefully will be the next one. Listen, the left has tried as hard as it can to turn – Somehow turn 4.1 percent GDP into uh, into something negative. It's it's not uh, <laughs> yeah. consumer confidence is uh, well, it, it, and I say that, it, I, and it is laughable to say that. I mean, because that's they've tried as hard as they can. Yeah, I saw a headline last week when the news comes out. Uh, the, the 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 headline was, "Well, strong growth now, but economists say it will not last." Well, what? Like, come on! If if if, if it was a Democrat president, it would be like you know there'd be fireworks and balloons everywhere. But somehow when it's President Trump, it can't be good. And, and you're, you're exactly right. It's like it's 4.1 percent growth. We didn't even come close to that uh, for any sustained period of time at all under the Obama administration. So let's let's celebrate it for what it is. The economy is moving. I, I talk to employers every day. We're, we're out in a, going across our district today talking to employers. And it is all good. It is all good news that I'm hearing from from uh, from entrepreneurs and job creators and employers across our district. Small business. Uh, well, it, it's turned into the to the mainstream media. This is the butt administration. Four point one percent growth, but consumer com- yeah. consumer confidence is at an eighteen year <laughs> high. Those two things speak to the common man. Those two, I've seen story after story about of small business that is that is you know increased their their. Uh, staff by by three four five hundred percent. Uh, listen, hey, my wife wants to ask you a question. Uh, she joins me on Wednesday. Hey, Shonda, go ahead. I just had a question because we have kids sure. that are in college, and I saw that you have four kids. And I believe that when before the president was elected, we saw no signs of Hillary, and that kind of gave us the heads up because there, the Democrats are very loud. Your kids, I'm wondering, are if they're like my kids now, where they're they're voicing their opinions in college yep. and, uh, yeah. and and where we as adults were more, you know, passive about it. And I was just curious about how your kids handle it. You're exactly right. Our kids are a little older. So our youngest just graduated from college uh, uh, two years ago. And um, but you're right they're, uh They're a little more libertarian leaning, which I think is fine. Uh, they've seen what, you know, big government means uh, to their fundamental liberties. So all four of our are lean a little to that. They're still conservative, but but a libertarian bent to it. And um, it's funny because uh, our oldest daughter, when she was on campus, she was she was uh, organizing Republicans and registering to vote. Our youngest son was wearing around a he wore a, <laughs> he wore a Reagan Bush hat on the University of Wisconsin <laughs> campus in Madison, Wisconsin. You're asking for it. I told him I said, take that hat off. You know, it's your last it's your it's your senior season in wrestling. You don't want to get in trouble on the campus. <laughs> But yeah, you're you're exactly right, and that's that's a great sign to see young people realizing that this is the greatest country in history, and they want to keep it that way, and they're getting more involved. Well, my son went to. You're going to love this one. It was Halloween at UMass Amherst, which is 98 yeah. percent uh, Democratic. He went as a Trump supporter, and I <laughs> as a, a costume, and I said, Kurt. We are going to have to go bail him out of somewhere. I just know it's coming. Oh, but... well, that's my son right there. <laughs> yeah. That's my son. Well, I would hey, expect hey, nothing I to... <laughs> No, but you know what? You're, you're, I agree with you. I, I want Obviously, I want young people to be conservative, but I want them to be engaged more than anything because for sure. me, once they become engaged, if they work to get educated a little bit and they start to kind of pull back the covers, they're going to see all of this for what it really is. You guys will appreciate this. We had a hearing. We've been doing these hearings in a subcommittee I chair on the First Amendment and how it's being attacked across the country. We did one on college campus life where we, they have these safe spaces and free speech zones and, and all this ridiculous stuff going on college campuses. And I asked the one professor, and this was a hearing about six, eight weeks ago, I asked this one professor from UCLA who was on the left. He was, he was for all these things, safe spaces and everything. And I asked him this. I said, on a college campus safe space, can you make this statement? Donald Trump is president of the United States. And the professor started his answer by saying this, it depends. And I cut him off right away, and I said, what do you mean it depends? It's a fact. He got elected. He lives in 1600 Pennsylvania. But that's how ridiculous the environment is getting on some of these campuses where your First Amendment liberties, free speech liberties, are being just undermined and attacked every day. So people like your son who are standing up, God bless him for doing it. It's not an easy thing to do. It, you're, you're putting uh, uh, a lot of personal capital on the line when you're coming out. Well, I mean, he's watched it happen to me, and all four of my yep. kids have watched it happen to me. And I think, 
in many ways it's it's helped them become uh, more conservative because they do know uh, – what I stand for and whether they agree with me or not, they they've never disagreed with my right to voice that opinion. And they're seeing people who are actively out to oppress, uh, ideology and opinion that is different than the quote unquote mainstream, which is, you know, what, what's the saying? If you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican at 18, you have no heart. If you're a Democrat at 30, you have no brain. I, I think, uh, yeah. it, 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 that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's frustrating as I watch now, uh, real quick, as we close up here, how are I know you're you're going to be the next speaker of the house to me sh- short of some sort of miracle here, which in a bad way. Um, what's been your feedback from from the the Beltway uh, after you kind of made it public that that was where you were trying to go? I've been just just so pleased and surprised, frankly, at the support across the country. I mean, so many folks, uh, conservative organizations across the country have have endorsed us. Um, you know, you, Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, Lou Dobbs. It's been it's been great. Uh, from from that perspective, but in the end, remember this is a student council election. It, the, the main focus we gotta we gotta be, you know, all about doing is keeping the house because uh, if if we're not in the majority, then jeepers, you know what the Democrats' agenda is. The Democrats want to raise taxes, they want to abolish ICE, they want to grow government, they don't want to reform welfare, and they want to impeach the president. So the main focus has got to be keeping the house. But if we're fortunate enough to do that, um, and then I'm. Then it's a then it's a, an election of the Republicans in the House of Representatives. So um, we're going to continue to talk to our colleagues over the next uh, several months as we stay focused on keeping majority in the House of Representatives, so we can most importantly do what we told the American people we said we were going to do. And I always I always say this: I think we make the job of being a member of Congress way too complicated. It's pretty yeah. simple. What did you tell the American people you were going to do when they gave you the privilege to go serve them and their business and their family in the United States Congress? Go do that. And we haven't done enough of that. The president's doing it, but we haven't done enough of that in Congress. If I'm fortunate enough to be speaker, we're going to focus on that and that alone. I'm going to sneak one last one in, the wall. Um, President Trump has made it very clear that he's willing to shut the government down for the wall. I agree. I'm fine with it. I think it should be shut down for the wall. I know there's already movement on the wall being done. Places have already started. Uh, Mitch McConnell comes out and says, basically, that's not going to happen. Uh, I don't see... Mitch McConnell being able to win a tug of war with the president, uh, but but I would also argue, if President Trump gets the wall, then his second term is absolutely sealed. We have to build the border security wall. It's it was one of those promises that the American people heard loud and clear. It's one of the main reasons that that President Trump was able to secure the Republican nomination and and get elected president, particularly in, uh, win the votes in in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, which made him president. So. We have to do it. No one wants to shut down the government. But I'll remind everyone, no. the only shutdown we've had this Jan- this year was in January when Chuck Schumer shut down the government because, you remember, it was a short-term funding bill, and he said amnesty was more important than funding the troops and funding our military. And he shut the government down right. over a weekend, and the American people over that weekend said, you're crazy, and he come back in and opened it up. So let's do what we said. Let's have the fight, and let's actually get the border security wall Agreed. built. That's what we're supposed to do. Congressman Jordan, as always, thank you. Always a pleasure to you catch bet, up Kurt. with you. Thank you so much. Good to be on with right. you guys. Take care, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself. God bless. Sonny's Corner with Sonny Johnson. Everything in hip-hop is not bad. Kanye agreed with us, so let's love him today until he raps tomorrow and you turn your back. Because if you jump off when the fun of the moment is over, then you are, in fact, making Kanye the token he is accused of being. So please... Don't do that. Don't go there. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. East on Sirius XM Patriot 125. We want to hear from you. Tweet the show at Garrick38. Once again, here's Gert Schilling. First of all, it's been far too long since I've spoken to her, although I've been listening to her on her uh, Saturday show on Sirius XM Patriot 125, she's the host of Sunny's Corner. Her podcast, Did She Say That, comes out today on Breitbart.com and on iTunes. She is the one and only Sunny Johnson. Good morning, Sunny. How you doing? Blessed and highly favored. How are you guys this morning? We're doing good. We're doing good. Rough week, you said, so let's make your week uh, more enjoyable. You and I haven't talked since the whole Russia meeting uh, happened, and I was wondering, I, I was dying to hear your takeaway from 
what the media took from that, not just the meeting, but the post-meeting press conference, and, and if anything, did, did what were your thoughts coming out of that? Of course, the, uh, the progressive media, fake news, you knew what they were going to do. Um, you could expect that no matter no matter what Trump did, they were going to find a way to turn it in, into a negative. Having said that, um, after watching after watching him come from the EU and after watching him talk to uh, the G8 and like G7, after watching him in those situations to see what he did in Helsinki. That made me very. I, I was, I was a critic of of that performance that he put on in Russia. Um, you are very big and bold when it comes to talking to our friends, and I applaud that. You know what I'm saying? Good for you. Right. But that big that boldness needed to show as well when you are talking to someone like Putin. And I don't care about the media pushback on it. I don't care about like any of that nonsense. But to me, it was like, I understand we have some swamp creatures in Russia, but I would take that swamp over anything that they have in Russia any day of the week. And, like, to even put, even with our problems, our system and our institution, anywhere near the level of what is happening under in Russia, under Putin, and under that oligarch system – like no, uh, no, I, right. I, I outright reject that. That was the weakest I have ever seen him in his presidency, and I hope that if he has a chance to do it again, he understands that there are ways that he can be tough against Putin while still holding the swamp accountable for their for their you know corruptible nature. But in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Should our institutions be compared to Rus- Russia institutions? Yeah. Sonny, what would you have liked to have seen him do? I mean, do you feel like maybe the, the meeting was more um, orchestrated from Putin's point of view? or No, like it, you... it, it could have been it could have been just the simplicity of saying something like, uh, I understand the, the last administration was weak. I, you know, I get that you, you were going up against Obama. You didn't look at Obama like competition. I wouldn't even blame you if you tried to meddle. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even blame you if that kind of weakness <laughs> would show that you would even try to meddle. But um, I'm going to assume you know that I'm not Obama. And I'm going to assume that you know that's not going to happen under me. And I'm going to assume that you know if you try it under me, there are going to be different consequences than what you suffered under Obama. I'm going to assume you understand these things about the Trump administration. Like, just the simplicity of saying something like that, that makes it understood the, the positioning of power in this situation, that would have went a long way. And you could have did the rest of it. Trumpian fashion, you know, change nothing at all. But just to let the American public know, as well as Putin to know, yeah, you did it. We know you did it. I even understand why you did it, because Obama was so weak. Don't do it again. And just the simplicity of that could have changed the whole nature of what came out of Helsinki. Well, let me ask you this. Because he's a businessman and he, you, you have to be a very personable, suave, businessman do you think that he was there just reading him the first time or do you think that he didn't know what I to mean, do still it's insert laugh track here you know what I'm saying there's a way yeah. the reason people love Trump is because of the way he can make his point while still disarming people and it could have been no right. reason that that same Trumpian attitude could not have been used against Putin while still still engaging in conversation. So if you can talk to Angela Merkel like this, if you can talk to Justin Trudeau like this, if you can, you know what I'm saying, muster this for our friends, you can muster that that same amount of energy towards people like Putin and uh, people like Lil' Kim. And even if Iran decides that their economy is bad enough that they are willing to come and talk, those people are the people that need to see force. And when you show them force, I think it will be easier to have conversations with people like Erdogan, you know, about getting the – 
the preacher out of jail. Like, if you are actually showing force to our enemies, I think more of our enemies will bow before they test you. I think the problem, one of the issues, not problem, but one of the issues of uh, him not being a politician is uh, meetings like this. I don't think any any of uh, um, any of his pre presidential meetings were uh, like or akin to sitting uh, with the heads of state and and talking and doing things. I, first of all, I've never thought he was a really good public speaker anyway. Uh, and, and I think he's put it at a disadvantage in many ways doing what he's doing. And he's, you know, he clearly isn't someone to be handled, right? I mean, he, he's someone <laughs> who, who goes out and does his own thing for better or worse. But, but at the end of the day, he's a pragmatist, right? He's a problem solver. He's not a politician. And in the last 19, uh, 18, 19, 20 months, uh, that's exactly what I've watched him do, solve problems. And that, that has made the left insane. Most of the insanity, most of the insanity that we see coming from the left right now is a distraction. And I, like I said, I hope people stop looking like at stop looking at the kids throwing a tantrum, and start looking at the people that are organizing. Um, if you notice, like when me and you start chatting, of oh, what almost two years ago, I was telling you then that we were going to meet democratic socialism at the voting booth, that it is going to happen. We are now at that point where we are seeing democratic socialism at the voting booth. We are seeing it take over a political party. And it is much, it is a lot of fun for us to laugh at these people, just like the Alexandria Cortez and to laugh at her. She doesn't scare me. But the ideology that is being spread across college campuses, that is being spread in underprivileged communities, that is being spread um, through migrant and immigrant communities, like they are building a new cornerstone for the democratic base, and it is going to be built off of democratic socialism with the merging of some kind of Sharia platform. And we are going to look up one day and be like, oh, my God, how did this happen? It is yeah. happening right now. And because we are distracted by things like Russia, because we are distracted by things like Acosta, because we are distracted by these things that fake news keep wanting to say about Trump, we are missing their organization, and they are doing it. So they are having a conference this weekend that will um, have both Democratic Socialist Alexandria Cortez and Linda Sarsour of the Muslim Brotherhood at the exact same conference. So they are merging these things. They are going to find a palatable way to message them to the American people. And that is what we should be focusing on while we are laughing and paying attention to distraction. They're doing it right in front of us, and Ocasio-Cortez is – a uh, shining example of, of I, I think that some of the left is trying to distance themselves from her while others are embracing her, and, and the message but she has is the, unfiltered. The ones so who are trying to distance themselves, those are the ones who created the monster. You know what I'm saying? Like, yep. those are the ones who said, yo, we can get you this. We can get you that. The government should do that. But they never had any intention of doing it. They just promised you it so you can vote for them. They don't deliver, and then they come back and promise you it again next election cycle. And the only difference between those people and Alexandria Cortez is that she wants to do it quick, fast, in a hurry, bankrupt the country, get it over with. While they want to progressively do it one step at a time while they normalize us to the process. So right now, we are just being taken from a slow roast beef, you know what I'm saying, into a yeah. lobster being thrown into a boiling pot. It's just about how fast you're going to get there. If we don't stop this ideology, it really won't matter how fast we get there. We'll still be cooked. The fact of the matter is she is proposing, uh, you know, this whole free stuff, free everything. The, the fact of the matter is you're looking at a, a, a Medicare for all plan that, that potentially, I don't know how, uh, how where the play is in this number, but would cost over $30 trillion over 10 years. That's, Thirty trillion dollars in addition to what we're already spending. We, that, that's that's Poo-poo. money out of your pocket. What's and, a little bit of pocket. money for? What's a little right. bit of money for human rights? 
You know what I'm saying? Right. And yep. this yep. is the this is the trap that conservatives always fall into. Um, the money is very important. Do not get me wrong. Understanding that this will bankrupt us and and ruin our country forever. That's a very big important detail that doesn't need to be left out. But the ideology is that they are pushing involves nothing fiscal. It involves human rights. It involves equality. It involves um, um, taking care of people and helping the poor. How can you be against those things? So conservatives need to start battling that twisted ideology in the form that it is presented rather than taking it into a fiscal area that is not really convincing people that it's a bad idea. No one understands $32 trillion. No one understands nope. what that would actually do to us. But they do understand human suffering and human plight. So we need to start making it our business to start saying, oh, you want to see human suffering? You want to talk about uh, uh, human plight? Let's talk about what happens when a system cracks. Let's talk about what happens when it bankrupts. Let's talk about all the people who are currently dependent on government actually having no access to any of the food or services that they are currently being served with at this moment, meaning they will be the first ones hurt the, the hardest by this crackdown, this implementation of socialism that you think is so great. So there are ways that we can start explaining to poor people how it will not benefit them to get all of this quote-unquote free stuff. In the end, they'll be the people that suffer the most. And and what is Miss Cortez's, like, you know, you have to have some sort of um, relationship with someone who's been in some of these positions because once you get into them, you realize that it's not as simple. And, and it seems like she doesn't have, you know, any sort of, of education in that it's only complicated to us simpletons that don't understand you know what i'm saying and that's how they look at right. it remember we are the deplorables we are the hit we are the uneducated you know what i'm saying and we just don't understand how if we step back and let the geniuses the intellectuals solve this problem all of our lives would be better for it and that's how they look at us so as opposed to going against them in a constant form, we have to do our work on the ground and convincing the people that would actually fall for and vote for this about how harmful it is to them. And I'll go back to say it again. Trump did not beat the Democrats. He won the American people. You can see that as evidenced by the American people still showing up to his rallies, still having lines of people that can't get in. It was never about beating the Democrats. It was always about winning the American people. And we need to use that exact same tactic to defeat the social, the democratic socialism and Sharia law pushers that are um, currently infesting our system. We need to win the people over to capitalism. We need to win the people over to conservatism. That will be our best methodology for fighting about, for fighting back against this ideology. How do you bring people to capitalism? How do you bring uh, uh, the 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 lower middle class to capitalism when the 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 carrier, the message, uh, and all of the venues to get the word out are controlled by the left? And that's the conservative million dollar question. So yeah. you know, it's going to take people like me to get out of my comfort zone, and it's going to take a lot of other people to get out of our comfort zone, and to actually take the risk to create the content and to start going into these places and actually competing. And um, I think what better time than to start doing something like that than now? So. And this last week, like I told you, I've had a I have I've had a tough week because I've been sitting and looking at the numbers, and I've been sitting and looking at how you can do some of these things, and and that is the truth. There are no conservative production studios, or there are no people that are already in place that you can just go to, and 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 use you know 
trade and bartership to kind of make some of these things happen without the initial financing. Everything has to be done from the ground up because the apparatus does not um, does not exist on a conservative side of the aisle. So people like me who see it and understand it, we actually have to start from zero because we are being handed nothing from a conservative movement or a Republican Party that will help us compete in the areas where we actually need to be. I think it's interesting that the 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 deplorables are supposed to be dumb, toothless rednecks, but yet it's the other side that feels that they're the should be getting the empathy. And they should be getting free health care. They should be getting free college. They should. Yeah, of course. They are so smart. No, this... They're so talented. They're so intellectual rulers of the world that everything should be given to them for free. <laughs> Wouldn't but, you love yet, to live in that fairy tale? I would love to live oh in that God. fairy tale. But it's actually this this side that is, you know, poor and fighting hard to be able to get that opportunity. Yeah. But yet the other side is claiming that they're the ones with it all, but they want to, to write the answers for it. Yeah, I think, and, and, and I got to tell you, I think that's one of Sonny's messages, and Sonny, correct me if I'm wrong, which is, you know, stop spending your time talking about the left and start spending your time explaining the right. Uh, and what it means to be conservative. Uh, you know, we're on the defensive all the time. We don't ever get our message out because we let the left dictate the conversation. And we're always the- angry, and we're always angry and bitter and yelling and fighting. Like, who wants to join that? Um, there is happiness in conservatism. There is peace and joy in economic freedom. There is um uh uh unlimited uh sunny days ahead when you're not worried about how you can pay your rent I mean, you know what i'm saying so we need to start showing people there are massive amounts of benefits to practicing conservatism and most of these people who are pushing socialism they live their lives very conservatively so we can point to you how they sacrificed, how they built their wealth, how they got to the position they are in now using our principles. And you need to start looking at that as opposed to the words that are coming out of their mouth because the words that are coming out of their mouth are not going to get you to economic independence. It's not going to get you to a real level of liberty and freedom that allows you to maneuver the way that you deem your life should go. You're not going to get that from what they're getting, giving you from their mouth. You're going to get that from what they've done in their life to acquire their own wealth. And I don't think we really have to sell capitalism that much. I think all we have to do is clearly define it and claim it. And I don't think that that's something conservative movement or the Republican Party has done, at least not in my time in being involved. Sonny, always a pleasure, darling. Thank you so much and look forward to catching up again. Okay, thank you for having me. All right. Well, it was fun. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Hope you got relaxed on your vacation. And we will uh, catch up with you guys tomorrow. God bless you guys. Have a great day. We'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Breitbart News Tonight with Joel Pollack and Rebecca Mansour. A lot of people not knowing what action they could or should take to make the difference. What I do is try to turn people on to sites like Breitbart, you know, people who are writing and publishing the truth so that people will get educated. But, you know, you kind of can't blame productive members of society who are kind of confused, perplexed as to what do we do to take this government back. Sirius XM Patriot Channel 125.